Hi everyone, welcome to my QTH for this video, the 17th weekend of lockdown. Uh, it's a lovely day today. It's, it's, there's a bit of cloud, but it's very warm. Um, started outside again because uh, a couple of changes, which some of you would already know about. Uh, my um, long wire antenna, my end fed long wire, um, is now a bit higher up. There's a bit more metal in the air. Um, I've raised it up by about a metre and a half. So uh, now, having done that, I've not noticed a particularly sort of tangible difference in terms of uh, performance. Oh, there's a plane coming over, let's just, there you go, into RAF Bryce Norton. To say I'm on the flight path is an understatement, but I don't, it's funny actually because I don't, I don't sort of really mind too much. With double glazing, you don't really hear them indoors. I, 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 I can just tune it all out anyway. Straight over the top of the house almost. Anyway, where was I? Yes. So, um, yeah, not not particularly uh, big difference in performance. Well, not really any noticeable difference in performance, but it certainly won't make matters any worse. Uh, obviously, the higher up, more metal in the air, the better it's going to be. Um, the bare match isn't very good, it never has been, which means that the MFJ is having to sort of do quite a lot of work to present the 50 ohms impedance at the, at the transceiver, but it, do, but it does work. What would improve the bare match would be to make it longer, would also potentially be to, um, to make the route down the garden a bit less convoluted. It's a bit like a Z at the moment. If I ever get a full license, I'm gonna rename it my full license and call it the, top band Z antenna or something, I don't know. But saying that, um, the inspiration wasn't actually mine. It was two other members of Harwell ARS. I mean, behind the end of my garden, there's just a bit of countryside really. So, um, which I don't think belongs to anybody in particular. So maybe uh, that's an option in the future. If I can extend it in that direction and in such a way that it won't get tampered with. Um, but anyway, nevertheless, that's one. Anyway, so I'll be uh, this weekend. Obviously, I'll be using it because there's the sked tonight, um, and uh, no doubt I'll be uh, on the 7300 on top band and 80. The other difference is and I've, I've already done a video on this. Is my, I've got a new co collinear antenna for 70 sems and two meters. This is a coaxial collinear uh, built by G1ZMA, very kindly, and uh, I, this weekend I'm testing it continuing to test it I've just actually I've just been testing it on 70 centimeters on FT8 and I wasn't being heard by anybody copied by anybody at all um, but the good reason for that is I noticed that on 70 sems there are well at least today there are only 12 active monitors on monitoring FT8 on 70 centimeters so uh, hardly surprising um, so anyway, I'll be doing this over the weekend on 70 stems and two meters. I've switched over to two meters um, with the uh, Yaesu FT991, of course. This is basically a radio that's, it's not dedicated just to FT8, but if I'm doing FT8, it's, use, it's, it's with this radio. Um, I do also use this for SSB voice calling, but it has a sort of basically a permanent connection to my Lenovo. Ultrabook, and um, I have actually made a contact today already. Uh, Golf 8 Hotel Uniform Lima, and I think I made another one. I know I'm imagining it, I thought I'd made another one, but no. Anyway, so using these new antennas, um, the, my testing sort of continues. Overall, my signal's getting out further. Um, a couple of days ago, I was down. Got, I, I, I was copied or decoded further into France than I'd been before, wait, well into Belgium, which is new. Um, I think I'd been copied in Holland previously, but there's no doubt that at the moment it appears to be working a lot better than my old collinear, which was, again, built by the same guy, G1ZMA, but from welding rod and was kind of falling apart. Two of the radials had fallen off it. Uh, and um, actually the whole antenna had broken in half, actually, and I, I think I did a video a while back, um, sat on the lawn 
soldering it all back together. So, um, but there you go. That's what happens. But um, I used that antenna actually on a VHF com contest a couple of days ago. Um, this is the contest they had on 70 SEMS. This is the contest that they do. I think the 70, well, the 70 SEMS contest is every second Tuesday of the month. Uh, and the two meter contest is every first Tuesday of the month. I did both contests. Now, previously on 70 SEMS, I had only managed to four or five contacts. Now, the problem is, of course, is that on, with, on those contacts, everyone's using Yaggies. So my polarization is completely wrong. And they, they reckon that you lose about 20 dBs of signal um, through just through polarization. But with this new antenna, I manage 19 contacts, which is a record uh, for me and demonstrates that this antenna is actually uh, working a lot better than, um, than my old collinear. So yeah, so this weekend I'm going to continue to test it, uh, primarily on FT8, because I'm likely to be busy, um, but uh, I might have a go on voice as well. Um, so uh, so there you go, it's, uh, it's just another experiment. And uh, as you guys know, I love an experiment. The other thing I'm doing is um, I've, I've started monitoring um, four meters. Uh, 70 megahertz. The reason for that is because one of the other, another member at Harwell um, basically said to me that I should, I should definitely buy a, an antenna for four meters. He's recommended one actually sold by Radio World for like 50 quid. And, uh, and you know, and the reason is, is that he wants us to be able to kind of like have a conversation. Now we can do that actually on 70 SEMS. We did that yesterday, but he's got it in his head that I should definitely start looking at, at, at four meters. And, um, you know, he's saying that, you know, it behaves, it's a sort of combination really between sort of two and six, which totally makes sense. You know, on, on two meters, if, if conditions are good, you know, you can get into continental Europe and if conditions on six meters are good, you can, you can get way further than that. So four is a bit, is a bit in between. And, uh, and he's been trying to, uh, convince me to buy an antenna and I probably will. But the thing is, is that I'll, I'll have to buy another pole to attach it. Uh, at the moment, the neighbors aren't complaining. And you know, if I put it a bit further down the garden, it'll probably be fine because my neighbor's house is, well, I don't know, tens of meters in the other direction. This, the one on to, to, to the left of the view that you're looking through now, looking at now is a bit closer, but they don't seem to mind. Um, I'm just monitoring the AM, uh, uh, AM calling frequency, which is, I think this is something on four that you don't get on other bands. I've been monitoring it for a, about an hour now, not heard anything yet. But um, last night there was a competition on four meters and, um, and I did monitor the band for quite a while. And you know, it, it's basically just very similar to what goes on on two, but obviously on four, um, there's a bit you, there's a bit more scope for DX. DX on two, obviously, is, you know, is, is, is a bit more difficult. Um, so, uh, I'm, uh, so I'm sort of intrigued, really. I've never given I've never given four meters a consideration. I, not, I don't think I've ever tuned a radio to four meters and listened, you know, on 70 megahertz. So uh, this is all a bit new for me. Uh, and thanks to uh, M0 UHF for, for, for suggesting it to me. Um, as far as the uh, 7300 is concerned, yeah, just still continues to be a brilliant radio. And, um, you know, I, I remain very pleased to uh, to have purchased it. Um, yeah, it's just excels everywhere. I, what I, I tried decoding some RITI signals uh, until I realized that the shift for amateur radio uh, was different to the kind of Pinsberg uh, RITI signal um, coming out of Germany. So that doesn't work, but um, at some point I'll have another go at that. But uh, you know, if you're into that sort of thing, having a built-in RITI decoder, it's a pretty neat touch. Um, there isn't anything about this radio actually that I don't like. The audio is great. You can listen to AM broadcast stations on it. Sounds pretty good. Uh, the audio on SSB, TX and RX is superb. Um, I mean, particularly on RX with some of the guys at Harwell ARS who've got stronger signals like G0 AOZ. I mean, this guy's coming in like, sort of like a, a local AM broadcast station. The audio is so good. Fantastic. And, uh, and it's not a huge radio. You know, compare it to the size of the IC756, you know, 
it's it's way smaller. Um, but yeah, the audio continues to surprise me. Uh, as does the overall performance of this radio. It's, it's just a really good radio, basically. And you know, I don't think I'm I'm not a sophisticated enough user of a transceiver to warrant buying you know um, a 101 DX for like three and a half thousand quid or whatever they cost. For now, this radio provides everything that I could need, you know, and probably a little bit more. So um, you know, I'm very happy with it. But uh, you know, maybe one day, maybe one day. So, um, so yeah, so I'm going to continue to monitor four meters just to see what all that's about. Um, I mean, to be honest, I could build an antenna actually that would, that would work, but for the sake of 50 quid, um, I'll probably buy one and then I'll buy another pole and, and put that up in the garden. I won't do that this weekend. This weekend is just monitoring, but, um, I might, you know, just something else, another facet of the hobby that I've not even thought about. And, you know, one of my friends, you know, is educating me, uh, it's one of the benefits, actually, of being a member of Radio Club. Excuse me while I just take a drink. Um, you know, it's difficult, obviously, at the moment with the whole COVID-19 pandemic. To obviously, to, to meet up in person, we haven't actually had a club meeting for months, for obvious reasons. But we have z regular Zoom calls. You know, we, we speak to each other on Zoom a couple of times a week. We have two SCEDs. Uh, one on 80 meters on a Wednesday and then obviously the Friday night sked which starts on top band and then QSYs to 80 uh, and then afterwards some of us talk on you know have a chat on two meters or whatever or, or 70 sems and um, you know it's been a revelation for me really I've never been a member of, a, of any radio club I actually only joined Harwell ARS because you need to join a club to uh, to get the training for the foundation license, and obviously I'm very pleased I did. Um, but you know, you make some friends for life. You know, uh, in in uh, you know in kind of engaging with the hobby, and they're all really really great people. I haven't met a bad one. Yeah, I don't know what it is about the hobby of you know DXing or ham radio. I've only ever had an encounter with one radio ham who i found rude and it was somebody actually it was on ft8 actually I, I was i was on ft8 weeks weeks and weeks ago i think maybe near the beginning of lockdown and i started calling a station on ft8 was, i was i was decoding a, a, a uk signal very strongly so i started calling this 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 guy and and then i walked away and then you know the phone rang and i walked away and when i came back to my radio about 20 minutes later i'd called him a, about 15, 20 times. In the meantime, he'd actually looked me up on QRZ and emailed me, quite a rude email to say, basically, can you leave me alone? You know, and I wrote, and I just wrote back to him and said, to be honest with you, do you know what you're, you, you know, well done. You're the first person involved in ham radio that I've come across who's been rude, you know, and explained to him that, you know, I'm working from home, you know, the phone went, you know what I mean? I took my eyes off the computer for 15 or 20 minutes and can, you know is it really the end of the world you know i mean he, he was very very rude actually i won't i'm not going to give his call sign out but he's the only guy i've ever i've ever come across who i thought was a how can i put this a bit of an ass wipe really is what he was and um and i basically told him that and then um and then he came back to me afterwards and said well okay yeah fine but you know if you ever need any help let me know so i sort of said i just didn't bother replying so you know there's enough good people out there to have to sort of mix with uh you know that's that that type of person but he's a rare breed um i'm digressing the, so the other thing i'm going to be doing uh, and again some of you might have seen my videos is um i've been using the icf ex5 mark ii this brilliant medium wave dx machine is all i can call it um uh, never it's literally blown my socks off how selective this radio is um and how stable these sort of continental stations on medium wave are with, with, with the sync engaged. I mean, you've probably seen the video that I've done. I've, I've done a kind of like a brief kind of review video. Uh, it, it's just amazing. But what I'm going to do this weekend, I'm going to start to do this weekend, is I'm actually going to use this radio with an external antenna, which I haven't done yet. I've recorded two or three videos using it in the shack um, on, the, on the internal ferrite. But uh, as you can see here, and this is a kind of identical actually to the, what, you, what you get on the back of the original Sony 2001 is an, earth, is an antenna and earth terminal. And actually, if you look down here, there you go. The original, but not the best, 
uh, Sony ICF 2001 and somewhere, okay, they're on the end here, yeah, and there's that you've got the same kind of thing there on that, on the 2001, and then you've got the same thing on the uh, 5500M on the back, there you go, you see, same deal. Uh, that's what dates this radio. Well, the weird thing about this radio is that although it's dated in that respect, you know, it's, it's, the, the, the original design's, you know, 85, 30-odd uh, uh, years old, um, it's pristine because it's brand new because um, Tam lent it to me about a year ago. He, had, I think he bought it, um, you know, online a couple of years ago, I guess. Um, so... Let's see what this radio can do with an external antenna attached to it. Great things, I'm sure, you know, and uh, so I'm going to start, I'll start doing that at the weekend and at some point in the near future, you'll see some, um, some videos on that. So that's something else I'm doing in the shack. And then uh, finally, there's the old full license manual, which I've started, which I still study and I'm kind of nearly halfway through it. And to be honest with you, most of it's sort of okay, but I've got to say that the section I, start, I, I, was, I got onto the semiconductor section, which, which is fine. I've studied a lot of that when I did A-level physics. But when we got onto transistor characteristics and, and biasing, uh, I must admit, that was hard going for me. And uh, I'm definitely going to need to read through that a few times. Um, otherwise, not too bad. Um, it's just a case of remembering it. Um, and then I kept going. Analog digital signals, no problem at all. I'm familiar with all that stuff. And then onto the transmitter all pretty straightforward it's just a case of learning it and then uh, down to um the phase lock loop how that works so a lot of it's straightforward but a lot much much more to remember with the full license than with the intermediate a lot to remember thank god it's multiple choice that's all i can say and uh, it's difficult to know actually how, whether the studying is going well or not because i've not even looked at a single full license um test paper so i'm going to read through the book um, and then maybe have a go at a test paper and then see how I get on. But maybe I need to read through, I mean, maybe read through the book a couple of times and then do a test paper. But most of it's okay. I think it's just a case of learning, you know, and I'm not in any hurry. Um, the, the, there's no sort of pressure on in terms of time scale. Um, but I would, I would like to be ready in two or three months. So, uh, you know, just got to keep sticking at that. And I, 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 no doubt I'll be doing that this weekend. But it, this isn't an easy, a lot of this isn't an easy read. You have to take your time, read it slowly to make sure you understand it. Otherwise, it just goes in one ear and out the other. So there you go. So uh, a bit of graft studying um, this weekend, monitoring uh, four meters, testing my new uh, coaxial collinear, um, and the EX5 Mark II tests continue. And uh, that, that's me for, for the weekend. So uh, anyway, I hope that update was interesting. I will continue these updates after lockdown i mean i suppose that you know you can argue that lockdown is not over yet but life is sort of slowly returning back to normal um you know so uh, but these videos do seem pretty popular so um i see no reason not to continue them while i'm uh, you know while i'm able to you know i do radio all the time what what might affect it is if it when it gets close to my exam for the full license I may have to curtail uh, my activity on the website for a week or two and just focus on that um, because obviously it's important that I want to pass that but otherwise I'll carry on and, I, and, and I'll carry on doing the regular weekly updates so uh, so there you go so that's it really um, I wish you all a very good weekend good DX have a listen to radio have an experiment with an antenna as I always say um, you know and uh, be safe and look forward to communicating with some of you on uh, on Oxford Shortwave Vlog, I'm sure. Uh, and other than that, thanks very much for watching. Cheers.